Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. See if you can pick up the theme today. <laughs> Let the wind 
that'll belong to the Lord. Bye. 
This is how I fuck my battle It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my bad. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how I fight my bed. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how we fight our battle. This is how we fight our battle. This is how we fight our battle. I feel bad for people who haven't seen anything in the spiritual realm. Because then you, you know, you really have to really believe that you believe that you know that you know. And it's much easier when God has opened your eyes to see. <laughs> yes, and uh, like, uh, was it Elijah that, that yeah. told his young one that was with him, <laughs> protege or whatever, <laughs> for God to open his eyes that he would see that they're not surrounded, but... God has surrounded the enemy with the angels. Amen. Amen. And, <laughs> Amen. and God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything. Amen. But when it looks like you're surrounded by the enemy, when it looks like there's no way out, that's when he comes through in a big way. Amen. 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 Ask him sometime. Open your eyes. <laughs> oh, yes. Amen.
God we serve right now. Believe it and receive it.
the Lord for a moment. We are at war. Our church has been experiencing rumblings. Quite a few have been under attack spiritually. It's been coming in waves. It is time to start fighting back spiritually. I got a word yesterday. Can I share it? Yes. Okay. A change of guard. Calling forth the ones God has chosen for such a time as this. The Lord is about to sound the alarm to those who have been asleep and far off from him. He who is, who was, and is to come is calling forth his army. He has recruited the ones the Father has given to him by name. He has assigned angels to these chosen ones. Some of these chosen ones don't even know or realize they are or have been called by the Lord. For it is not by their strength or might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Those who know they have been called, continue to stand and watch. Stay at your post. I will come upon you and show you what is next. I will show you who and I will show you where. As I gather my called ones, the ones who I have reserved for a time as now, wait. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Uh, hold on one second. There's one more and I lost it. That's good. That's good. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There is more, but not now. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I follow that. <laughs> when I can't find things, that's, that's usually it. Except, thank you for finding my sermon for tonight. <laughs> I lost it. My wife's not home. So that means I really lost it. <laughs> uh, is it a file folder? Uh, and uh, I wanted her to type it up, so she has it somewhere, and I don't know where it is, and she's away for the weekend. Watching my grand, some of my grandchildren as uh, their parents went off to a wedding of somebody in, that finally got married from their college. Amen. And I say finally because they get old. Like <laughs> my regular children are getting old. <laughs> yeah, the only one that's still young. Thank God, I have one young one left. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Are you ready for the Word of God? I am. I'm ready for the Word of God this morning. All right. Amen. We'll let, we'll receive the offering later. All right. So, obviously, we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare today. But we're still on the history of heaven. I skipped a, you know, skip out every once in a while, a couple of weeks, and come back to it. And I told you that eventually we're going to get to the war in the heavenlies. So this is the war in the heavenlies, part one. So just to review, number one, heaven is a created place. <laughs> that in Hebrew is actually translated the expanse, the great expanse. So in the beginning, heaven and earth were interwoven. They were interwoven spiritually. The Lord even walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. But with the fall of Satan from heaven, uh, because of pride, he wanted <clears throat> and was determined to bring man down and God's creation down as well. And so he went into God's paradise and he sold man, what would you call it? It's kind of shyster type of thing. <laughs> and convinced them to do the same sin that he did, the sin of pride, that they could be like God if they ate from this tree. And so they did. And so they fell, so man fell. However, during this transaction, with this, the result of this transaction is that Satan now rules the atmosphere around the earth. He's the prince of the air. Amen? And, and we are unwoven. We have become unwoven, I should say, from the eternal. And can only, science says we can only see a fraction of creation. Only 1%. So our, our, our sight was affected. 
The paradise of earth was consumed under the earth and it made into a holding place for the believing dead that were not yet forgiven until the sacrifice of Jesus was made. So then Jesus leaves heaven and comes down and starts the interweaving again for he's woven into the womb of Mary. So that God starts to interweave earth back into heaven again by bringing salvation from sin by the sacrifice of the righteous for the unrighteous. And then Christ descends into Sheol to the paradise section, preaches the gospel to them, and leads captivity captive. And now everyone who dies goes to heaven that are in him that are born again by the spirit of God that believe that his blood is the sacrifice that washes our unrighteousness away amen Amen. we're clear and we're up to date from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead well I have said that so many times that I actually thought that it was a scripture verse (laughs) but it's from the apostles creed However, it is backed up uh, by uh, Revelations 11, 18. Amen. Now, for this, I have to find my glasses because I wrote it in teeny little cursive letters. Did I bring my glasses? Yes, I did. Can you turn around and read? Oh, I could. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't need my glasses no more. <laughs> And the nations were angry, and their wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. So there's coming a time of judgment. But meanwhile, there is warfare going on in the heavens and on the earth. Between good and evil. Now, scriptures from the book of Revelation as well as from the Old Testament prophets of Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel give us a peek of the warfare that's going on in the heavenlies. Now, nobody has to tell us, I, I wouldn't think that nobody has to tell us, that down here on earth, in this physical realm, there is a war going on between good and evil. Is there a war going? Is there a war going on between good and evil? Can you can you feel it? Oh yeah. Can you see it? Oh yeah. Has it affected your life in any way, shape, or form? Yes. Yes, it has. Amen. Amen. We get it. We get it. Uh, from the time that Abel was killed by Cain, almost right after the, almost right after getting kicked out of the garden. Right up until today, war in Israel, war in in Europe. Ooh, evil is everywhere. Even the paranormal circus was at the Cape Cod Mall parking lot this weekend. You had to pay sixty bucks to get in, and it, it it was a combination of Satan. Horror, mm. sadomasochism, and a circus. Wow. Wow. And kids 13 years old were allowed to go in. Sure. And yeah. it, it was, uh, oh, yeah. from what I could read, it was bad. Okay. And it's still there. Uh, don't yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Enemy, the enemy, the enemy. Satan comes to kill and to destroy. Kill and destroy. He, well, he, he kills and destroys too, believe me. So, for this war, we are centering on the heavenlies uh, today. So we're going to go to Revelations first. Revelations chapter 11 and 12. I'm do the end of 11. Uh, when the seventh trumpet is sounded in Revelations 11.15... And victory is declared in the heavenlies. 
The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, Amen. and He shall reign forever and ever. Right. Now, how... Oh, in that particular scripture verse, that tense are become, that's a hard, that's a, it's hard in English to translate that particular uh, tense that's in Greek. What it means is how it will come to be. Okay? So the kingdoms of this world, and I'm going to show you how it will come to be. All right? Or how it has and will come to be. That would be a more proper translation of that. If you, you know, if you were, if you were Jewish, you would know what was going to happen next. Amen. Because it kind of like, the Jewish people like to tell you a story and then they like to tell you it again from a different angle. All right? So you're going to get now a different angle on this. And now you're going to get the heavenly angle. He's been talking about what's been happening on earth. The, the angel and Jesus that came to John on the island of Patmos, talking about the earth. And now we're going to go out into the heavenlies and get a different angle on it. Now, so in a, in a, so if you are not Jewish, but Roman, you can misinterpret this whole next chapter. <laughs> if, if you are English or Anglican, you can... <laughs> You know, you would go, like I did, uh, not that I'm English, but I did the same, I just said, what in the world is this chapter doing here? What is this chapter doing here? But if you're Jewish, you get it. This is where we are going to get the story from a different angle. So, we go to chapter 12, and as, uh, how many people remember Paul Harvey? Oh, you have to be age 60 or above. <laughs> Paul Harvey would say, here's the rest of the story. So here's the rest of the story, the heavenly part of the story. All right. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain delivery. Now, the Romans interpreted this as being the glorified Mary in heaven. And now they worship her as the queen of heaven. And I remember this as a kid. Uh, we, every, once, uh, every year we crowned the queen of heaven statue outside in front of our church. So they pick little girls, you know, to, to go and to do that. And, and that's it. You know, and they, they worship Mary, which they shouldn't do because the Bible says we should only worship God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. And and so and then they could get into, you know, this is the church was being born and Christ and church and, and the Pope is the head of the church and on and on and on. However, I'm only half Roman, the other half is Jewish. So. <laughs> so, let's get the rest of the story here. I would go right down the middle and I would say this. Mary, who is Jewish. <laughs> amen? Yeah. Come on now. You can say amen to that. It's true. Yeah. Amen? Gives birth to Jesus, who is Jewish. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and is the Messiah and God. Amen. And this is declared in the heavenlies. Amen. There's a crown of 12 stars which represents if you're Jewish, the 12 tribes. Yeah. If you're Christian, the 12 apostles. Yeah. Amen. And the whole meaning of these two verses really is that Genesis 3.15 has come to pass. That his the Lord has put enmity between the devil and woman. Yep. And that of woman would come some savior that would crush the head of Satan. Yep. He would be hurt in doing so. And he did. He was hurt. He was crucified that our sins might be forgiven. 
Amen. So, this warfare between good and evil, the devil, the devil's seed, uh, it also says in that that there would be enmity between his, the devil's seed and, and the woman's seed. So now we have a spiritual warfare going on between evil spirits and us. Now, have you ever got a thought that was really bad, but it didn't come from your heart? It just was like, whoosh, whoosh, came in this way, came in sideways. But have you ever heard that, that expression, it came in sideways? Well, that, that's the enemy whispering, because the enemy is in the air, and you can whoosh, whisper a horrible thought into your heart, into your, into your mind, into your soul. And you, and you get you get to do some warfare here. If you don't do warfare, you might end up in the nut house eventually. You know what I mean? If you don't do, if you don't say, "I rebuke you in Jesus' name," amen. get away from me, Satan. Amen. You're entertaining that thought. Yeah. If you entertain that thought, it becomes part of your soul, and you may follow it. Eventually, it may came, come out in some kind of physicality that will hurt somebody else because that's what the devil wants to do. Amen? Yep. He wants to hurt and maim and kill. So, then along comes the enemy in verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns on his head. So, this is Satan and his kingdoms. Now, we already know from earlier in the book of Revelation that these represent actually physical countries on earth as well. And uh, if, if you look at it from a Jewish perspective, it, it is the, <clears throat> the kingdoms would come from northeast Eurasia and not from... The Romans like everything to come from Rome. <laughs> so they, they have their own description for it. But if you're Jewish, you know that the dragon is Gog and Magog and, 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 and Russia and China and Iran. Yeah. We went into that a few weeks ago. And uh, I got all the scripture verses I could from, from Old Testament prophets that these things have not yet come to pass and they are waiting to come to pass. Amen. And so we can see that actually coming to pass. You can argue with it and say, well, the Europeans are just as bad. Yeah, well, they probably are. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But anyway, verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of stars of heaven and cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman waiting for her to deliver that he might devour that baby as soon as it was born. Jesus. And we all know that Satan put it into the head of King Herod to kill all the children from in that area where, where the wise men had said that Jesus would be born. All the male children under two. They went out to do that. But not only that, the stars of heaven um, <clears throat> that are talked about here are the ones that follow Satan. Now, this is the only scripture verse that says one third of the angels fell. Only one. And it is, what would you call it? Symbolic? It's a symbolic type picture. And usually we don't, you're, you're told, you don't make a doctrine out of one scripture. You do, especially if it's symbolic. However, it seems like this is the one place where almost all the churches agree that that's what happened. And because a little bit later in Revelation 12.4, we understand that, that the devil has other angels with him. Amen? And there seems to be a lot of them because they're bothering us all the time. <laughs> all the way around the earth. Amen? Every single one of us. Every single country. And so, uh, <clears throat> whew. For thou hast said in thine heart, this is how the, the enemy fell, for thou hast said in thine heart, I, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Whew. 
And then Ezekiel, oh, then, then in verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell into the sides of the pit. So instead of the sides of the north, Satan, you're headed for the sides of the pit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Ezekiel 28, 15 says, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day you were created, because God creates everything perfect till iniquity was found in you. Therefore I will cast thee um, as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub. And David saw the beast also in Daniel 7, 7 and 8, same description. Uh, and then it, he says, till the time you were cast down and judgment comes. Jesus in Matthew 25 says, <clears throat> that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Whew. We're not going to talk about who else is going to go there right now. But that's that's what is going to happen. All right. Yes. Amen. Now, although this is only a few scriptures that I've I've gotten together to put in in the Word of God, uh, these numbers of specific fallen angels, they are going to cause us a lot of trouble, and and, and we are therefore put into the army of God. <laughs> Amen. We are in the army of God. We have to do some fighting. We have to do some fighting. Now, at a point where I was an atheist coming into the church, and I saw people, you know, praying and fasting and stuff like that, and I would go, "Hmm, they're taking a temper tantrum," you know, taking a, a temper tantrum, saying, oh, "I will eat God unless you answer my prayer," <laughs> and that type of thing. And I'm going, "Oh, this is this is I don't know this kind of." Mm -hmm. Until God spoke to me in a specific way, which I will get to. Scripture points out that the Satan and his angels are alive and well, roaming both the heavens and the earth. From Job, you know, he would go out and be accuser of the brethren. He is still accusing the brethren. And in fact, some of them are in hell already because they have done just despicable things before the flood and they were already put in chains and bound in hell. But there are those that are still around harassing us and we know it. Now the spiritual Christ that the dragon Satan wants to extinguish you can also say that Mary gave birth to the church because the body of Christ is the church. And that the enemy wants to take down the body of Christ, which is you and me. Because we are all part of the body of Christ. So does he just want to extinguish Christ at birth? No. He, he's after us. He's after us. Especially after us as we follow Christ. So that, that spiritual Christ was born, uh, the born again Christians, Holy Spirit filled Christians, so that we join with the angels in warfare against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians six eleven and twelve says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Oh, oh, oh. There are princes of evil. There are powers of evil. There are rulers of evil of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. In Daniel 10, Daniel fasted for three weeks. And then finally, an angel was able to break through that atmosphere of wickedness around the earth of Satan and his angels and when the vision was sent to Daniel the angel said to him from the first day the Lord heard 
your prayer. By getting the answer back to you <laughs> took great spiritual battle. Okay, this is a paraphrase. <laughs> it took a great spiritual battle for the spiritually wicked prince of the area of Iran, Persia, still has a wicked spiritual prince and, 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 and getting stronger, stood against. However, the warring angel Michael, who happens to be the prince over Israel, he's pretty busy these days, fought off the wicked prince of Persia. And finally, I was able to get this message through to you, Daniel. On what should happen to Israel in the end times, in the later days. Amen. Daniel 10, 12 and 13. And even reading the oldest book of the Bible in Job, we see that our adversary, the devil, is accusing and he's cunning and, he, and he, he gets us to be tried and to see if our faith is any good and, and is always trying to tempt us to get us to fall. He's the accuser of the brethren. And this is the warfare that we find ourselves in at this time. Here we are, believers in Christ, behind enemy lines. So how do we fight this battle? 2 Corinthians 10, 4-6 For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty, mighty, through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, Amen. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and brings into captivity every thought to the obedience, to the obedience of Christ. Obedience. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience. When you're obedient, when, when, your obedience is fulfilled. A lot of people like to leave that verse out. <laughs> when, when your obedience is fulfilled. All right. Say that. <laughs> now these verses tell us that fasting and prayer, right, which Daniel did, are mighty weapons against spiritual wickedness. But then also... We add one more in in the New Testament, a caveat, that if there's going to be real power and answer, then you have to be obedient to God. Amen. You have to be obedient to God. Amen. Well, what, God, what does God want you to do? He wants you to do good things. Amen. He wants you to do good works. Amen. How bad is that? That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's good. That's good. So he wants you to be good. He wants you to do good things. Are you going to do good things, people? Yes. Come on now. Do good things. Okay, now I'm going to get very California surfy on you. <laughs> I want you to have good vibes. <laughs> Put out good vibes to people. Not, not evil. Oh, I, I have to confess that I, I, I had a bad week. I think it was last week. And uh, I went to the dentist. Well, that's bad enough, isn't it? You know you're going to go and you know you're going to get tortured, right? I mean, as a, as a, it, since you're this small, you know that, all right? And so uh, go to the dentist, and uh, Micah's calendar and my calendar both said it was at 2. I had taken a little card home. I asked for a card because I'm old. And card <laughs> by the time I got home, I would forget. And so, you know... I, I put it on the calendar, he put it in his thing, so I, I would have somebody at home to take care of him during that time. My wife was away again <laughs> with her family that time. And, and so, go to the dentist, and um, I'm right on time, 2 o'clock, and I go to the desk. And this rude lady, <laughs> this rude lady behind the desk, you know, says, you're late. You're late? And we're canceling your appointment. Oh, and I'm saying, I'm not late. I'm two. My, my appointment was at two. And she said, no, it was at 150. 
And 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 she was right. <laughs> they they had you know they had sent a message through the internet, and you know it said, "Are you coming? Are you coming Tuesday?" And I just said, "Yes." I didn't look at the time. <laughs> I had noticed that they changed the time, and I'm going, "Well, I'm ten minutes late." I said, "Even if you even if you think I'm ten minutes late." Last time I was here, I sat for 20 minutes in the waiting room waiting for that appointment. You know? And so, look, well, I brought a book on angels. <laughs> you know? And so I'm going to sit down here and, and, and uh, you know, and she said, no, we canceled your appointment. Uh, you're going to make everybody else late for the whole rest of the day. And, and, uh, and so I said, no. I'm not. She said, when can I reschedule your appointment? And I said, I am not rescheduling my appointment here. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to Micah's dentist for, for people with special needs. Because <laughs> obviously, I am going to have a problem with my temper. <laughs> so, anyway, he got me. The enemy got me. And uh, I, I gave them one star. <laughs> Google. <laughs> I'll get them. I'll give them one star. <laughs> no, it's not nice. It's not nice. It's not nice. It is. It's not nice. So we we get we get captured up and we do the wrong thing. That's not good vibes, okay? But we need to. Here's what we need to do. We need to put righteous sound waves. Righteous sound waves into the air, into the heavens. Righteous of praise, worship, amen? Right sounding waves into the atmosphere. And then we need to take away from the flesh by giving up the desires, whatever they may be for a season, amen? I'm talking about good, goodly desires. I'm not talking about other things, yeah. which should not be there anyway. Okay? <laughs> This, I'm telling you, is powerful warfare together with praise and prayer, which are the sound waves going up, okay? They are going up into the heavenlies, and they are changing the atmosphere. And that's proven by science that I've been adding in here every once in a while, the past few weeks, okay? And it's proven by science since... We have learned that everything in the universe is made out of waves and vibrations. Amen? Mm -hmm. Therefore, sound is important it is. in the atmosphere. Sound is important. So prayer is important. And yeah. worship is important. It's changing the atmosphere. And we also learn from Einstein's equation, E equals MC squared, that everything in the universe is made out of light, energy, or mass, which we will call flesh. Yeah. Okay? And here we are. If we give less in that equation, if we give less to the flesh, we get more energy out, more power out, more light out. Amen? Because that mass has to go somewhere in that equation. And if you, if you take away from the mass, then you give in to the light and the energy. And now I can pray because I'm a scientist and I'm going, this is scientific. I'm praying right now and I'm changing things because I'm speaking into the atmosphere. And I am praying God and I am praising God. And I have extra energy because I've given up things of the flesh. And I'm obedient to God, and that gives extra power to it. And then I got the gifts of the Holy Spirit on top of all of that, the dynamite. Amen? That's dynamite. And, and he's given us a powerful, if we want it, a powerful spiritual language in the gifts of tongues. And so we can pray in tongues, not even understanding what we're saying, but we know we are changing the atmosphere. We are doing a heavenly battle. Amen. So this week, while I was praying in tongues, and I, I, I was telling the people Friday night, uh, I, I haven't done this since I was a young Christian, and I didn't know whether I was speaking in tongues or not. 
And back back then, what I did was I pulled the word out. And it was just what? I knew it was French. Just what? It sounds French, doesn't it? Just what? And so uh, uh, I was living in Canada at the time. And uh, someone in the commune, we had a, uh, a little bit of a Christian commune there for a while. And uh, I knew she was uh, French Canadian. And so I said, Mary, what does just what mean? And she looked at me and she said, Henry, that means believe in the emphatic tense. <laughs> believe in the emphatic tense. And I just looked at her and went, oh, Jesus just slapped me across the face. <laughs> I was I was like, oh, am I really speaking in tongues or am I? You know, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I, but I wanted to capture two. I was I was in front of the computer, and I had I had been translating. Uh, you know, one of my jobs is is uh, I sell collectible stamps, and so I wanted to tra translate uh, a, a couple of words that were in Italian into English. And so I was doing that. And then I'm uh, praying in the Spirit. And uh, I said, oh, you know, these are new words. I, I think, you know, I like this. You know, the, the Internet knows all the languages and stuff now. And you just put, type in the thing and say, what does it mean? And so the words that I got was Kida Kona. And Kida Kona. Uh, K-E-D-A-R. Q-A-N-O-N. -N. And I, I put each one in. And they were both Hebrew. Yeah. They were both Hebrew. And Enkana means to come to possess. And Kida means the land of the enemy. <laughs> so I was praying, come to possess the land of the enemy. Therefore, yeah. I was praying in Hebrew that there would be a change in the atmosphere that would affect the land around us that we would come. You know that this used to be Christian, Cape Cod. It used to be Christian. Do you know how, how much Christian it is? 1%. Here we go with that 1% again. It's only 1% of Cape Cod is born again Christian. Wow. Maybe. That's probably pushing it, you think? <laughs> Guilty. Yeah, amen. Well, it's going to be more. It's going to be more because because Kida Kanan is going to happen because we're praying for it. Amen. We're praying for a change. We will, if if we all get on board, knowing that this makes such a powerful difference, that we can pray in English, we can pray in tongues, we can fast and pray, and things will change. Yeah. Do you want to do it? Will you do it? Summer's ending. Although this week it's going to be hot so that the kids can suffer in school. <laughs> but, you know, summer's over. And we get, I'll admit that as a church, we get a little bit lax in the summer. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> you're always working, always working. Amen. And I'm not, I'm not talking about work, though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amen. You're always working for the Lord. All right. But a lot of people have to work extra. And when you're working extra, then you have less time for the Lord. Yeah. And I realize that you have to do that in a, in a vacation area because you got to store some money away for the winter. That's when the bills are really big and you're not working as much. Amen. And so you got to get it. You got to get it that way. However, now you know that you're making a powerful difference. And I think we really need to have some times of fasting and prayer. I am going to leave it up to you how you do that. I know how I do it. Um, you know, and I do it as the Spirit leads in my Amen. life. Amen. Amen. And so, and then I know exactly what to give up and, and what not to do and what to do. And if we are obedient, we are going to see a big change in the atmosphere. Not so much of this heaviness. Not so much of this aggravation. <laughs> Amen? Not so much of, of uh, the enemy poking us, but us poking him. 
Yeah. Amen. Re that's called re that's called godly revenge, all right? Because it said so right back there that God's going to, uh, if you're obedient, then revenge will come. Uh, revenge against the spiritual people, not, you know, we're not talking about for you to judge others. And that, that's how, you know, you should not be judging others. You should be praying for them. You should not be judging others. You should be praying for them. You should not be judging others. You should be praying for them. Praying for them. I hope I'm getting, they're getting through, all right? Amen. So, Lord, we come before you this morning. And we thank you for your word. Uh, we only got through a few verses. But Lord God, we know that you are in charge. And we know that great things are going to come. In amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to receive your tithes and offerings now as our brothers come forward. And Mike has a super Jesus shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> so, Todd got the memo through the Holy Spirit <laughs> to dress like pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Then we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Amen. And we're going to close with some worship songs. Because that is going to clear the heavenlies in such a strong way. So we're going to ask the Lord to let His Spirit fall. One of the visions that we had gotten uh, quite a few months ago on, in Shabbat service on Friday night, prayer and, prayer and worship, was that of the angels lobbing down, <laughs> you might say bombs, of fire, oil and fire and blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, the enemy runs from the blood of Jesus Christ. The fire is the Holy Spirit. Oil is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we want to see that fire fall from heaven. We want to see the blood of Jesus wash and cleanse the atmosphere. Yeah. Let his glory fall. Yeah. <sighs> Lord, let your glory fall As on each day Songs of enduring love And then your glory came And as a sign to me
knelt upon the ground and with one voice they prayed.
More prayers into the atmosphere to change it. More praise into the atmosphere to change it. Lord God, to change the world around us and by doing good works to touch the hearts around us. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week. Tonight, 6 o'clock, going to be doing the uh, prophetic word for, for this year that you got in January. We're going to do a repeat just to remind you. Amen.